his widely read book, German Protestant theologian Emil Schuerer says. The congregation sat in an appointed order, the most distinguished members in the front seats. The younger behind. Men and women probably apart. Schuerer then states in a footnote. The separation of the sexes must be assumed as self-evident, although it does not happen to be mentioned in any of the more ancient authorities. For what is said in pseudo-philo of the therapeutic cannot be here taken into account. Nor is a special division for women mentioned in the Talmud. This apparent self-evident assumption is highly problematic. One of the leading experts on the ancient synagogue is Jewish Rabbi Lee Levine, professor of Jewish history and archaeology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Levine says that until the last few decades, the conclusion that men and women sat separately in synagogues was universally assumed. This modern tradition reached back to the Middle Ages, and presumably back to the founding of synagogues. This assumption was shattered when challenged by S. Safri in 1964. Safri argues against the seating arrangement based on two factors. First, the archaeological data that had been collected from the New Testament era until about AD 700 contained zero traces of evidence of the seating arrangement regardless of the location of the synagogue in Israel or outside Israel. Further substantiating this claim is that plenty of synagogue inscriptions found from this time period name parts of the synagogue, but nothing has been found naming a place reserved for women. Second, Safri says the rabbinic sources are silent on this supposed seating arrangement. There are many discussions on the parts of the synagogue but none about women sitting separately from the men. Levine concludes, there can be little doubt that throughout late antiquity, Jews gathered in the synagogue for religious purposes, without making any distinctions in seating arrangements between males and females. What is more important, the idea that ten males are required to start a congregational quorum is not found in ancient sources until at least 500 CE. Before then, women could be counted as part of the ten. Even as late as the 12th century CE, authorities such as the Jewish scholar Rabbi Utem acknowledged that women could be counted as part of the congregational quorum. Rabbi Joshua says the following. During the Second Temple period in ancient Israel, women were able to actively participate within the larger society, both socially and religiously. Women served as leaders of synagogues participated in ritual services, learned and taught Jewish law, were counted in a minion, and from archaeological evidence, do not seem to have been physically separated from men during prayer. There was active participation of women in all facets of Jewish ritual life. Archaeologist Zeev Weiss, of Hebrew University of Jerusalem, has noted, By now it is widely accepted among scholars that synagogues from the early centuries of the Common Era did not have a separate women's section. This might surprise people, whose knowledge of Jewish synagogues derives from contemporary Orthodox or pre-Second World War European examples. In the first century there was no special women's section in the synagogue. Moreover, there was no divider, as there is today, that separated female from male members of the congregation. So where do we believe the idea came from? The modern custom of separating men and women in the synagogue is perhaps due to the influence of Islam. From approximately the 7th century CE onward, 